And here's a good example of how to calculate the energy transported by a wave. Here's a real example. Let's say we have a string. It's uh, put under tension of 100 newtons. It has a mass per unit length of 5 grams per meter. And the wave equation that describes the wave that's going to be traveling along that string here, y, the displacement of y with respect to x and t is equal to some amplitude. Of course, we need to put some amplitude in there. So let's say it's a 5 centimeter amplitude times the sine of pi over 10 meters x minus 50 pi hertz times time. So that describes the wave. Now, how much energy is this wave carrying? Notice, to calculate that, we need to have the mass per unit length, which we have. We need to have the angular frequency, the amplitude, and the velocity. So let's see if we have those things. So this is equal to 1 half times mu, and mu would be 5 grams per meter, which is 0 0.005 kilograms per meter. All right. Now we have to have an omega, and of course remember that the standard equation for a wave, and it's always a good idea to write that down for comparison, uh, is equal to the amplitude times the sine of kx minus omega t. So the omega is right here, 50 pi hertz. So we can plug that in here, that would be 50 times pi uh, hertz, that would be per seconds, and we want to square that. So that's good. Now the amplitude. We said 5 centimeters, convert to meters, that would be 0.05 meters, and we have to square that. And finally the velocity. Well, we have to figure that out. Velocity, we can either figure out from the frequency of the wavelength, or we can figure out from, this, from these values right here. We know the velocity is equal to the square root of the tension divided by the mass per unit length, which is equal to the square root of 100 divided by mu, uh, which is, um, hmm, let's say, 0 0.05, oh, one more, 0 0.05 kilograms per uh, meter and that would be 100 newtons. Now, somebody might write me after I make this video and say, well, you know, this doesn't match what the velocity would be when you got it from there, and the answer is yes, that would be correct. These velocities would not match up, but those were just picked out of the air. I didn't carefully calculate what this equation should be to match the velocity I get out of here, but let's, let's ignore that for a moment. Let's just say we don't care. This is just an example. Then what we can do is we can take the 100, whoop, the 100 divided by 0 0.005, take the square root of that, and so it gives me a velocity of 141.4 meters per second. Okay, that didn't go in here, so this would be 141.4 meters per second, and if I multiply all that out, I should get the power or the energy per unit time transported across the string. So we have that, so times 0 0.05 squared, uh, times 50 squared, times pi squared, uh, times 0 0.005, and times 0.5 equals, and I get the power is equal to 21.8, and of course the units would be watts, or 21.8 joules per second of energy being transported over that string. Now, just so we have full coverage on that, let's go ahead and see how far off I was by picking these numbers. Those are probably way off from what I need, but just out of curiosity, let's try to figure out the velocity from this information right here. Notice we were given the k and we're given the omega. So, k, which is equal to 2 pi over lambda, is equal to pi divided by 10 meters. And then we had omega, which is equal to uh, 2 pi f, which is equal to um, 50 pi hertz. All right, so now since I know that my velocity is equal to frequency times wavelength, what I can do is to get the frequency, I take omega divided by pi, so that would be omega, which is this much, divided by 2 pi, so 50 pi hertz divided by 2 pi is the value for omega according to my equation. And now lambda can be obtained by taking this, so, um, hmm, let's see here. So I'm going to take this value right here, and I'm going to write this as 2 pi over lambda equals pi over 10 meters. So if I multiply the top and the bottom here by 2, I can say, well, that's equal to 2 pi over 20 meters, and I can clearly see that my lambda is 20 meters. So that multiply times 20 meters. 
This pi cancels out this pi. This 20 becomes 10. This 2 becomes a 1. 10 times 50 is 500. So the actual velocity, v is equal to 500 uh, meters per second, if I use the numbers that I plugged in there. But again, I didn't do a careful job making sure that these numbers match these numbers right here, and that's why they're off. But nevertheless, I just want to illustrate that when you find mu, you find omega, you find um, a amplitude, and you find velocity, plug those in, and out pops the energy being transported by your wave. Now, for those who don't feel very good about me using this number here, as opposed to this number there, one thing we could have done, I could have changed the tension to make sure that this velocity match this velocity right here. So let's say, how much do I need to increase the tension by to get 500 meters per second over here? So we need a new value for tension. Let's come up with that. So what we can do is we can square both sides. So we get velocity squared is equal to tension divided by mass per unit length. I can then say, well, that means that the tension is equal to mass per unit length times velocity squared. And so mass per unit length is 0.005 kilograms per meter and multiply it times the velocity that I want which is 500 meters per second and I'm going to have to square that so let's see what the tension should be to make sure that the values I plugged in here at random actually match the values that I will get out of here so that's a good exercise so let's take 500 we square that we multiply times 0 0.005 equals and I get 1250. So if I had actually used a tension of 1250 newtons, then the velocity would have been 500 meters per second instead of what I came out with, 141.4. If I then replace this by 500 meters per second, then I get the value where everything matches. So just so uh, we take this 21.8, 21.8, we divide it by 141.4 and multiply times 500 and then we've gotten a power transport of 77 watts so all right so just to clarify what I did was I independently chose these numbers from those numbers not giving a lot of thought to that and then I realized oh wait a minute if I calculate the velocity like this I get one number if I calculate the velocity from using my k and my omega I get a different number how do I make the match just increase the tension so that the velocity I get from calculating this is the same as the velocity I get from using the wave equation. So now we're in sync, and that would be then the proper answer. That's how you do that problem.